G'day, how you going? Ianapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my live stream today where I'm gonna paint a beautiful ocean sailboat scene for you beginners. Something quite effective, simple. And when that person comes into your house and go, here you go, what? I like that. That's gonna abstract them that much. They're gonna be impressed by what you can do. Because something like this, you can do it, all right? So get on over here and I'll show you exactly what we're doing, all right? Now you can see me horizon line there. I'm gonna do the sky first. And I've got some marks here. I don't know if you can see them, but they are just to show me where I can get the different bands of the ocean water to make it look like it looks like that instead of like this. You wanna try and get it looking like that. First off, I'll get me craft white. Now I call it craft white. People go, what's craft white, Ian? It's just soft bodied acrylic paint. And it's student, I, I call it student paint, but it's what I'm using here, it's global and it's good quality. Now, I like to put some retarder with that. That's gonna slow down the drying time of that acrylic paint. I do not put that retarder in my colored paints, only in this white base coat that I'm using here, which is, I call it the craft white. So I wanna mix that up with my big whopping two inch putter on a brush. Now, if you want this putter on a brush and the blending brushes that I use, message me on Facebook, the link's in the description below, and we'll get you some. So, just wanna get the actual sky on for now. So we get the putter on a brush, and that's why I call it a putter on a brush, people first time here, look at that. It ain't mucking around, it's already on. How's that, eh? Now all I've got to do is finesse it. I'll bring it just a bit beyond the horizon line there. Now I'm going to the tip of the brush and stroking that left and right like a pure gentleman and just getting that white coat evenly ironed down. Like you've got a crinkled up sheet out of the packet and you're ironing it straight. There we go, beautiful. Let me just grab my spectacles for close up bits here, what I'm doing. Now, what do I do next? I've gone blank. Um, okay, this brush here, hang on, let me get these off first. Because see, I've got white paint on there and I don't want to bring it over the blue. So I'll pull that off now. <laughs> now this brush, I just want to wipe it. Don't have to wash it because we're still gonna be mixing on the white that's on the canvas. So I'm just wiping that brush and I wanna get my simple sky. Simple sky here is blue. So my go-to color for blues is the cerulean blue. And I also wanna put some polluted color or some depth in the horizon. So I'm going to get this blue all across the front edge of this putter on a brush, just like so. Now, you watch how this puts it on. Okay, I'll start at the top and I'll come down, because if anything, you want it to come lighter. This white paint on here is gonna dull this, because see that blue now? If it was that blue, it'll be too loud, too much like a cartoon, and we're not cartoonist. We're bloody artists, aren't we? And that's what we wanna be. So we'll push that on at the top, pushing it on. Now I'm gonna come down right across the canvas. Now see the edges here? There's nothing there and a little bit of nothing there. Don't be shy to crisscross it. Get right down to your horizon line there. Crisscross it, get it all over where you want, just like that. Because this brush, because it's so big and controlling, you go to the tip again and you stroke it. And this, that would look like spray paint. You don't have to blend that or nothing, it's already done. See how quick, effective and easy that is? Now, I'll wipe that brush again, just getting the main blue off it. And we wanna get the gray, so we're picking up the gray. This is just a mid-tone gray. If you don't have it in a tube, just simply mix up some grays and container it for yourself, if you think you're gonna use it. I used to do that in my early days. Now from me horizon line, I wanna start with the gray, let it push into that blue, wear it away, and then start coming up your sky. When you put clouds into this and the blue, it just looks fantastic. Okay, get that down there like that. 
striking it, striking it. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you pretty much know my method by now, but sometimes I do a lot of different stuff as well. And you want a fan brush, a hog bristle fan brush, and I like to grab this, load her up, and get some clouds in our sky. So get that, see how I'm loading it on? Chiseling it on, chiseling it on. That's how I load my fan brush for my clouds. Okay. Now, I might want something, I don't want to do lines like this, you know. A cloud needs to have some body, a bit of a base, and get some body up there, something like that. Bits of, it's okay to have open bits in it like this, because when you blend it, they're going to create lighter and darker values. Now the next thing you need is your blending brush and a kitchen towel, and you're just constantly now looking for the vibe. Hit that, watch this, pull it across. Look at that, beautiful. Wipe it, come up to the top. Now soften it and tickle the tops there a bit, just so it's looking like some real lovely God creative clouds there. We'll come this way. See, I'm moving the brush all different ways, tapping it, blending it. Now see how this is nice and white there? That's great against that paler part. Leave things like that there when they happen. The clouds happen right in front of you. Every time I drive without fail, I'm constantly looking at the clouds and I am absolutely fascinated by the way they just create themselves. You have all sorts of clouds. Sweet clouds, soft clouds, angry clouds. There's a simple cloud. Now I just do want to kind of base it down into that grey a bit just to give it a bit more realism. There we go. And we'll put something else over there as well. Loading up the fan brush again, the hog bristle fan brush. If your fan brush goes like that when you wet it, you got the wrong one to paint the way I paint. Those ones are for watercolours. I love using a hog bristle. I want something. Now see what I do? You got this cloud. What I like to do is just my trade little habit. I like to come in front of that boom, little one there, bang, that's done. And then probably now start building the cloud that I intended to do. Sweeping it, flip flopping over, whatever like that. It's all happening. Bang. Uh, where do I put my blending brush? See the blending brush? It's constantly picking up nonsense. Now Put that in front there, if I can. Bring this around, there we go. Tickle the tops, bring it down. Let me look in the monitor there. And you can see how this is just, get a. am in front, you're behind, so to speak. Sweep this around, tickle the tops. The tops, you just, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. You're just looking for that right blend. The more you do them, the more you find a style and you think, my God, my clouds are working, the more you do finesse it. Now, I want to quickly get a little bit more white and just put maybe something here, white in front of it. And ones like this, I pretty much just blend the bottom down, leaving that top line there, I'll show you. Right down in the horizon, it's looking like haze and weather in it and all sorts, right along there. And I'll have a look in the monitor at that as well. Now, I don't like the way it's just stopped, so I'd like to just continue some kind of behaviour there. Flip-flop around. See, no thinking about it. Flip-flop around and get this coming right off the picture there. Get rid of those starry fingery looks. Okay, done, 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 done. That's a little bit better. They look like clouds. Now, I've just got to quickly wash that. I just want to finish this sky, so it's a nice sunny day out in the ocean. You've got a sailboat out in the ocean, so it's important to have a nice sunny sky. And in the nice sunny sky, you've got beautiful fluffy clouds, and you even got some of those simple cirrus clouds. So we might have a cirrus cloud up there. They're kind of the ones that are sweeping, just like that. And I might put something there, get a little bit more paint, and something here overhead. Boom, like that, okay? When I do an overhead cloud, if anything, see these arms? They're sort of coming off like that. And when you blend them, well, hopefully, 
they give that overhead look like this cloud's going to have his bum on it so you flatten it down like so there we go and then start turmoil blending tapping dancing whispering that around leaving some of the vibrant stuff there as well not that bright oh, i don't want it that bright okay there's one there simple looks like a cloud yeah that'll do now these cirrus ones these have no edge they're just gap filler clouds they're just filling in the empty gaps in your sky if you want gap fillers you put your cirrus clouds in there there we go that's it okay that's dry gonna pick up the craft paint and get this bit here done so what i might do how dry is that it's a good enough dry i'm just going to tape it so as i get a reasonable line there so where's me water right about there now when i'm taping this watch what do i do is a camera there this is average tacky tape but so you don't destroy your work see where my thumbs are i've pushed it there kept it taunt reasonably tight not too tight you don't want it to spring back now i'm pushing it just here i'm not going to go here and rub the living buggery out of it just this bottom edge i just want to tap along so it's level because if you rub it it could distort okay just there this is such a simple thing but if you know it you'll never have the problem again tapping it there then i can just rub this very edge of the tape right there and it's all here done not all over the cloud there where it's going to create hassles when you rip it off okay now the bottom water half we're going to get the craft paint now that main area there had the retarder this bit here doesn't have as much you don't really need the retarder in the water only for my skies now when you're painting with the masking tape, be sure, I'll get the paint on first, don't paint up into it, paint along with it, like so. And I'll get some more paint there on the brush, like that. Paint running with the length of the tape, just like that, boom. Now I wanna stroke this, like I did with the sky, and we're gonna get our watercolors on there now if you see down here <laughs> i've got quite a few paints here sorted uh where are we we've got some turquoise turquoise uh turquoise turquoise uh, why i'm going turquoise turquoise is because some of it i want blue mixed with it uh, i'll get that over here is that the cerulean blue love cerulean blue i don't know why i just love it now i'm going to start with the oh okay and hang on a minute i need a bit more softer body ooh, paint you gotta be careful when you squeeze those bottles because sometimes it sounds like they're going to do a fart and it's a bit embarrassing when you're painting all right so we're going to grab some of this paint it's very dark strong this is phalo turquoise you just grab any turquoise let's see if this blue is going to darken it up a bit like that if it doesn't well maybe i shouldn't have added it but there we go now i want this remember those pencil lines i put here there's one there one there and one there this dark band is this first bit here Whomp. you do your water in bands look at that now I'll come up to the horizon line and I'll get a bit more right up there dark the best way to get it dark if you want it dark get this putter on a brush get the paint right on the edge and you stamp it on like that because see when I brushed it it was pushing it all in with the white and it's hard to control and you're like what's going on anyway we do that then we can keep the outer edge there a lot darker come down into the light a bit now we're grabbing this color here and some white and we want it a bit more white the white on the canvas is going to make it lighter as well come on there you go and we'll just see how that's going to look beautiful turquoise color lovely isn't it 
and there's my other van right here. Now that's not light enough. I want that more lighter, so I'm going to put a ton more white in it. I want it way lighter than that. There we go. Somewhere there. Now see where it's joining the darker colour? I'll get this fading down here, just fading into nothing. Just down there like that for the time being. I will grab a little bit of cad yellow just to give it that green vibe. So I'm getting some of the yellow. Look at that cad yellow there. We'll put some of this there. There we go. Simple. Now I'm going to wipe my brush because it's starting to push too much light from here to there. Watch what happens when I wipe that brush. I'm going to wipe it like a pure gentleman. Oh, there you go. Right. And then I want to merge that greeny lighter colour into that top darker band. There we go. Now I can blend them. And I've got control of what I'm doing. Getting a bit more light. Put it there. A bit more light again. Coming down. Now I've got some grey on my uh, easel. No, palette. Always get them mixed up. See now, that's the deeper part coming into the shallow part. I've got some grey. We're going to... This is the actual bottom bit. Very light. That white paint is allowing it to rub across the canvas the way it is. And this is the shallow part of the water. Like there. And now I've got some yellow ochre. That's just going to be the sand colour. At the very foreground so right down here oh yes look at that rub it in there pick up a bit more control it there we go now just blend that into the top gray bluey whatever color and that's pretty much the shallower color now I'm trying to just iron out some of these bands here as I'm going that's what I'm doing and that'll do it now we've got to put a few bits of white in there just to make it look a bit real. Uh, I'm on a flat brush and I want the good quality titanium white for this. So I'm just going to load up the flat brush like so. All that water is still wet. All right. Now find a dark spot. Uh, I don't know. There's where are we? Let's just put something here like that. Stop. Uh, wipe it. And leave the top there and just kind of lightly, gingerly stamp it into our water there. And it's just making subtle breakers out there. I've got to put the sailboat there, so I don't want to put too much where I'm going to put that. Okay. I just want to see what that's doing. Fine, that's fine. And we'll probably put something breaking here. We call them, well, I call them breakers, little breakers out there. Lots of little breaking white water just sort of sit it down like so and where else can we have some probably a bit more here something maybe here i want it at the top mainly hard That'll do. Oh, I'm having the boat somewhere around there, so I've got to be careful. Carried away. Now I'm just fading that down. Now if you want to make these into a real wave, you pretty much get the dark band under this white bit. But there's no big crashing surfy waves in this one today. This is just the subtle ocean there. Beautiful. It's just a nice, calm, subtle day for the 
for the boat to be out on the water. So I'm just getting some more here, some more here, more here, and some. Keep them level, keep them pretty level. Wipe your brush. And wipe your brush. Just sort of sit them into that wet paint there. That paint's still wet and gluggy. Just gingerly squint your eyes and look at it. You get a bit of vibe of how your painting's going there. Now we've got to put the agitated bit at the front to make it look like the very shallow bit, okay? So that's that done. I'm going to give it a slight dry. Um, I can pull this off. See how that didn't stick? Look at it. The way I showed you how to put that on, you'll never have a trouble if you do it that way. And that's quite a sticky tape. Um, where are we there? Okay, we can get, if you want, I'm going to wash that brush just to show you because it's all about a tutorial and showing you what you can do. I'm getting some of the very dark turquoise and you might want to, I don't know, let's say put a, some bands of dark water scalloping around here and there if you want where the boat's going i would i'm gonna have it about where about here so i want a, a shadow under it there we go so i'm going to put my boat somewhere around there and if you had the darkness in the middle of these waves here it'll give them that curling look but anyway we've got bits of choppy dark bits there how's that looking that's okay leave it at that now um oh the bottom bit so simply grab i don't know we'll grab a we're going to grab the titanium white again and i love this scrumbling brush it's, it was a flat but i've made it into a a scrumbling brush now what i want to do is grab the the agitated foam on the edge of the water where it comes to the shore i'm just going to grab say my fan brush the titanium white and i'll start from about here now i want to kind of mix this up like so let's stop there for a minute and we kind of blend this. Now what I forgot to do, I normally like to dry it before I do this because it comes very hard if you don't. So I'll do this bit for now and then I'll dry it because when you dry it and make your paint a bit rubbery, it's a lot easier to blend it and make turmoil and foam out of it, okay? So I'll just slightly dance that in there like so. Hopefully that's looking like agitated foam. Yes, but let me dry that. Now let's, and then I'll have the actual water maybe coming here. Watch this. This is the bit where it's just hitting the, like there. It's a bit agitated there, coming off there. Watch when I rub this back. Uh, oh, see? I've got to rub a bit harder. Now, the top half of this line, you want to agitate into the water like that, see? Leave the bottom half nice and sharp and hard. Let this fade out, blend out, lighten out. It's doing all sorts of foaming, agitating business like that. Don't, see, I, I went a bit too much there. See, it's starting to dry up here, even though my water's rubbery. So just do a bit at a time, bit at a time. So where's my fan brush again? So we'll come here now. Bit at a time, so let's do a bit at a time. Bit at a time, there. Just that much, see? Same again, leaving the bottom half sharp and pushing the top half back. Left and right, pushing it left and right and out into that ocean, full of motion. I think I dried it a little bit too much, really, to be honest, but I'll get by. Don't dry yours so much. 
Now I want more agitation here because the front of this, it's all about the agitation to make it look like foam. Oh yeah, she's really, where are we? That's really, really uh, dry. Yeah, get it agitated, agitated, agitated. Wipe it. It's looking a bit too, I want them a bit more lineal. There we go, we're getting there, we're getting there. And just to finish it off over this side, maybe a bit of real thick, the thick paint. Quickly blend the top of that back. Oh yes, come on, get it in there, that's it. A little bit at a time, blend it back. Agitation, look at all that agitation out there. Grab your brush, get some nice, another one there. Top half only, it's like a second wave of water coming in, slight wave. How are we going there? Not bad. I want to try and lineal some of this up, so I'll just go there like that, if I can fix it up. You get the gist of what the guru's doing, don't you? And we can probably get something there. It's where it's mainly starting from. It's just all, you know what I mean? Now, grab yourself a liner, a uh, script liner brush. Where is my liner brush? And find the darkest color you had and um, get some water in your brush. I'll grab that into the greeny bit there, hopefully, and some of that yellow ochre into it. Okay, a bit more yellow ochre. You want it inky, but not too transparent inky. And you just get real nervous and wiggle this under that white line, I'll show you. So grab your mouse stick, Malcolm. That's one of these sticks with a rod on it. Grab your liner brush, very gingerly thin, and be nervous, like you've just stolen a packet of chewing gum at your, for your first time, and you're real nervous about getting caught, and wiggle that under there. Now, it's probably not dark enough, but it'll do for now, but find the right temperament you need it to be, and just wiggle that. Get a bit more on the brush. I need a bit more blue in it, to be honest, to make it darker. There we go. Now, let's get going, Ian. Okay, we'll start here. Not there, that's a bit darker. Just here and there, look. Gingerly, nice and thin. The thinner you can do this, the better it'll look. And when you become really good at putting this stuff on there, you can start pulling it and making shadows from it and all sorts as well if you want to go that far. But for beginners now, this is just the best way to put that shadow under that front foam. It just sits it down onto the sandy area there, okay? Boom. Pretty simple, wasn't it? It sat it down, sat it down. All right, I'll put Malcolm back up there. That's me mouse stick, Malcolm. Now let's get this boat out there, huh? You need a, uh, you need a flat brush, flat brushes. Just chisel it on, get it a bit inky, not too much. Chisel it on. How long have been going for? 37 minutes, that's not too bad. And we're gonna prime in the boat. You've gotta prime it in with white first. I think I'll try this one today, Tees Rose Lover. Good on you. And we're gonna put a boat right on that shadow spot there. Okay, so where are we? I'll get this there so I can stand. It's so hard with this camera in my way, isn't it? But I get by. And now I'll use my bullshit stick because that's a bit more easier. So use your, your T-square or your bullshit stick. And I want to pretty much put that boat, hang on. I'll zoom in on this one for a start. Where are we? Where's my mouse? Hang on a minute with you. Uh, I'll zoom into there. Uh, okay. Now, I want to create the boat. So get the length of it, 
which is about here, straight across. See this bullshit? Stick with those people here the first time. Look how straight that line is. When people see lines that straight, they don't go, wow. They go, bullshit. That's good. It's a bigger way of saying, wow. A lot of my regular viewers know what I mean. Now, we want to pretty much make the front of this sailboat up like that, about that height, find the height, the back can be bowed out like that somewhere. Come along and block it in. Now, I've got to dry the water here because it's very, still a bit rubbery and wet, it's got a lot of... Um, retarder in it still, so just let me dry that. See, I use this, I'll get it about this fat, yeah, that's better. See how it's going on there, more solid. Bow the back of the boat. There we go, if you can. Now find different brushes. Because some of this can have the slightest shadow tones in it. Okay, where else are we? Did I grab a smaller one? Yes. Now I want to put a bit more of the cabin on top. So I'm going to do that now. It's pretty much all white, this boat anyway, for a bit of slight values in it. Now, about here, boom, and about there, boom. Now we'll just straighten that up like that. See how easy this is? Look, boom. You find any boat and you can put in there on your painting. There we go, there, like that. Fix that bow up at the back. There we go, like that. Fix the bow up at the front. Now that's how I get paint on my elbow. I just looked at my elbow, it's leaning on the palette right in the paint. There we go. And sometimes after I've done a painting, I've gone inside and I'm doing my thing and I've a big chunk of paint on my elbow. Now I'll get that. Now we're going to put a bit of, um, so we use this, we want the main mask about here coming all the way up, white, white as buggery, right up to say about here. Take your time, no rush. Even though I rush in my tutorials, it doesn't mean you have to rush. Now we'll put a bit of a, an outrigger on there, let's say about here. I think it's an outrigger, something like that, something like that. And we'll put the, the bow rail on, some kind of, bow rail, how's that look, yeah, 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 it's looking like a bow rail. Uh, we'll get another, now that sail is coming Right there like that. Look at that bang. And then we're going to bring that right there like that and colour that in. That's your sail. This is the probably the most longest part of the painting now, getting all this sailboat in here. Now see where you put your sailboat? Make sure your clouds aren't too fluffy white there because you're going to have a a nice vibrant white sail there and you don't want it to clash. You want things to hold on their own. I'm going to fix this up a bit better later on. I just want to get the actual painting done. Now we've got stuff holding that down there like that. Boom. We've got another sail here coming all the way up here, maybe not as tall, and he's going out the back of the boat, like that. And then we're gonna come up here as well, come along there as well, and then color this big triangle in sail. Get it right across there like that. See how good little flat brushes are for doing stuff like this? I'll fix it up properly later. 
I'm just getting the main bit of it done. Now we want a sail coming here, about there. We'll bring the line there, but the sail's going to come about there and come all the way up from about here. And a bit of a gap at the top, and then just colour that in. Colour it in. There we go. And what else do we need out there? We'll do another one. I'll add a bit of value to these later. You know, make them stand in front and behind each other. But you're getting the gist of it. That's going to connect to there. Now we've got some rigging coming all the way down here as well, rigging there and there and there. Bit of a boat. Now just to break it up, I'm going to put a bit of, because it's taking a while, I just want to get a bit of blue, a bit of substance, a bit of shadow within it. So we'll get like a, a gunner rail, gunner rubber or whatever they call it, you know the bow rubber. Get some kind of windows in there just to break it up some kind of um, behind us in there okay that's our boat I, I will detail that later but you get the gist we've got a sailboat out on the water there now where's me script liner oh my goodness big chunk of paint on my elbow. What brush is that? That was a little flat, just a little flat. Uh, autograph, I'll use this dark colour here. So I'm going to autograph it and whack a frame on it and see how it looks. So I'll put my autograph here. And I want to thank all my patrons who support my content every month. There's a link below if you want to become a patron. Patrons get little perks. They get to see what's coming up way before everybody else. They're treated a bit special because they subscribe to me every month and they help me out. So if you want to become a patron, hit the link below. And there's my art group page. Post your art in there. Oh, Steve's autograph, my cat. There we go. Go. Now let's whack a frame on that. There you go, look at that. That's not too shabby. A beautiful, simple, effective seascape. Look at the frame, how it sets it off. You always pay to have a nice white inner border, mainly on seascapes, but it suits a lot of other subjects as well. And something like that, I know you can do it. All right, I had a lot of fun doing this painting. I hope you learnt something along the way. Uh, share, like and subscribe. And if you like what I'm doing, tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck and good on you.